Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we study some topics relating to businesses selling more and customers buying or paying more for a higher value or more expensive goods and services. These are trading up and down, upsell and cross sell. This is the one of the final two topics of this learning outcome, selling travel products and services. First, we look at upsell and cross-sell. We all probably had the experience of being upsold or cross-sold, such as in a restaurant or a cloth shop. We have a look of a video first and see if you can recognize any of the upsell and cross-sell techniques in a restaurant. Everyone knows that eating out costs more than cooking your meals at home, but restaurants employ all kinds of tricks to milk even more money out of their customers. From the design of the menu to the choices on the wine list, your visit to a restaurant has been carefully orchestrated to make you feel good about parting with your hard-earned cash. It may even have you coming back next week for a chance to do it again. Upselling. When you're ordering your meal, restaurants have all kinds of ways to upsell your choices. If you're ordering a vodka drink, your server may ask if you want it with Grey Goose. If you choose a steak and baked potato, your server might ask if you want to add a lobster tail. Or make your baked potato fully loaded. It's about making the experience better for the guests while slowly increasing the bill. <laughs> they said market price. What market are you shopping at? Server incentives. Anyone who's worked in the restaurant industry is familiar with server incentives. Owners and management will incentivize the servers to supersell a particular item. The server who sells the most of the item during that shift can win a prize, which may just be cold hard cash. That's enough motivation for most servers to try to talk you into a dish that you may not particularly want. If a server is a little bit too enthusiastic about the chicken and artichoke special or a new microbrew, it might be the incentive item of the night. Smaller portions. You may not have even noticed, but according to The Guardian, the plates at your favorite restaurant may be shrinking. On a smaller plate, it still looks like you have a lot of food, but the resulting smaller portions will make you more likely to order multiple plates or add on desserts. Savvy servers will likely even recommend a minimum number of plates to share for your group. Cha-ching! Instant refill. If you've ordered a bottle of wine or premium water for the table, you may notice how excellent the service seems to be when it comes to constantly making sure you have a full glass. Yes, this does mean that your server is a seasoned pro, but maybe not quite for the reason you think. The server's goal is to have that bottle finished by the time you're barely halfway done with your entree. What are you going to do, finish out the rest of the meal with nothing to sip on? Of course not. Nine times out of ten, you'll go for that second bottle, or at least another glass. The same rule works with cocktails and beers. Servers notice when your glass is about a quarter full so they can have a fresh drink in front of you by the time you're polishing off that last sip. Surprise! <laughs> Surcharge surprise. Even if you know exactly how much your meal costs, you may still get a shock when the check arrives. That's because restaurants often add surcharges that boost the total bill. In cities that have raised the minimum wages for restaurant workers, proprietors might tack a minimum wage surcharge onto a customer's total. But those aren't the only surcharges to watch for. Restaurants in most states are legally allowed to charge you up to 4% extra on your bill if you're paying with a credit card, as long as they make the policy clear on the menu or your server tells you. Sides aren't included. If you're accustomed to dining at upscale steakhouses, you're probably used to this policy. Steakhouses rarely accompany their prime cuts of meat with a side dish. Along with your $50 ribeye, you'll be expected to cough up another $10 for a baked potato. This practice could easily trickle over to other styles of restaurants, so you may want to ask specifically what's included with your entree. Engineered menus. There's an entire industry dedicated to engineering restaurant menus in a way that prompts you to spend the most bucks on your dining experience. Some of the most common tricks are the absence of dollar signs and pricing and the use of ethnic food terms to make items seem more authentic. Yeah, I'll have the Thai chicken pizza, but hey, look, if I get it without the nuts and leeks and stuff, is it cheaper? Restaurant menus may even highlight or bold the font of an item they wish to push. Super pricey dishes are sometimes decoy items placed on the menu to make the rest of the prices seem more reasonable. Even the eye movements of people reading menus have been analyzed so menu engineers can guide your eyes to the dishes with the highest profit margins. Desserts Even if you don't usually order dessert, you may have been roped in by some of the dessert selling tricks that occur in many restaurants. Some restaurants instruct their staff to leave the dessert menu on the table without asking customers if they want to see it first. When the dessert menu is dropped in arm's reach or standing on the side of the table the entire meal, most people can't help but pick it up to take a peek. And if you're still hungry from those smaller portions, dessert can be awfully tempting. 
Smells chocolatey, eh? Now, eat it. Wine psychology. We already know that alcohol is the highest markup in a restaurant, so it should be no surprise that the wine you buy at a restaurant costs you far more than you pay for the same bottle at the grocery store. In fact, one glass of wine might cost you more than the restaurant paid for the entire bottle. What you may not know, however, is that the restaurant understands the psychology of those ordering the wine. People will rarely order the cheapest bottle on a wine list for fear of seeming cheap. So the second cheapest bottle on the menu, the one many customers opt for, is usually the worst value. Upselling sometimes called suggestive selling. Upselling is encouraging the purchase of anything that would make the primary purchase more expensive with an upgrade or premium. For example, if a customer had already purchased a cruise holiday, upselling would encourage your customer to upgrade to full board or better room or other add-ons to improve their experience. Cross-selling is encouraging the purchase of anything in conjunction with the primary product. For example, if a customer has already purchased a package holiday, cross-selling would encourage that customer to become a member of the company with deals and discounts. We may experience this. We might not view the experience as an upsell or cross-sell. If done right, upselling and cross-selling can be very positive experience and help to strengthen client-business relationship and improve company's profits. Research have found that only about 5.27% of hotel orders come from room service. The rest of the incomes are from different types of upsell or cross-sell, such as room upgrade 20.19%, wellness 20.40%, and beverage 9.75%. Cross-selling and upselling can be used unethically, in a pushy sort of way. But as a strategy and used properly, upselling and cross-selling should be used to help both businesses and customers win. E-commerce companies do upsell and cross-sell brilliantly. For example, by bundling together the camera and two very related, even essential products, Flipkart makes a compelling offer. Notice how there are multiple combos available. Bundling is also quite often used along with a discount to increase the perceived value of the offering. There are some of the key categories of upsell and cross-sell on the cruise ship Carnival Miracle. There are numerous ways that a cruise ship could upsell and cross-sell including, for example, spa treatment, bar and restaurants, excursions, art auction, shopping, casino, etc. Some of these services or products are from carnivals, but some are from its partners. How to encourage consumers to upsell or cross-sell? Know your customers, especially loyal ones. Start from existing customers are easier to sell to, by a long shot, you're 60 to 70% likely to sell to an existing customer, compared to the 5 to 20% likelihood of selling to a new prospect. Using new technologies, such as high-tech tools, easy payment methods, can help upsell. Sell experience. Experiences are what can make their journey that much more enjoyable. Focus on value. Demonstrating the value of the upsell or cross-sell will shift the mindset of clients from one of, I do not want to spend more money, to, we need this to be successful. In that way, customer is likely to purchase them without being as critical of the price. In summary, don't assume your clients know all your services or products. Communicating regularly with your clients through blog posts and email campaigns will help ensure you don't miss an opportunity for a lucrative cross-sell. Our second topic for today is about trading up and down. Similar to upsell and cross-sell trading up means selling a higher priced, higher quality version of a product to the range, generally to increase sales of the lower priced model through consumer association of its image with the more prestigious model or brand. By Business Dictionary's definition, trade up is opposite to trade down, has two meanings. One. 
increasing the number of features and their associated benefits of a product, improving its quality, or backing it with a superior level of service to justify a higher price. 2. It also means the type of selling in which the customer is persuaded to buy a more expensive item, or a larger quantity, than originally intended in exchange for an attractive discount or some other incentive. Such as trading up a new phone or car. Ultimately, trading up refers to a consumer's tendency to pay more for a higher quality, more expensive item or a brand that they have formed an emotional attachment, and feel a sense of loyalty. Trading down, on the other hand, means reducing the number of features and their associated benefits or the quality of a product to suit the selling price demanded by its customers. Let's take a look at some examples. Orbits.com is a travel fare aggregator website and travel meta search engine. The website is owned by Orbits Worldwide, Inc., a subsidiary of Expedia Group. It is headquartered in the Citigroup Center, Chicago, Illinois. The figure sheds some lights on how a company trades up its products and surveys. Originally, it was established through a partnership of major airlines in 2007, selling flight booking products. Gradually, new services INCL, hotel car rentals, cruises, and vacation packages were added in. It later became the first company to launch mobile app flight booking and vocation packages. Recently, more supporting elements, such as loyalty program, orbits rewards, orbucks, deals and discounts on hotel bookings. These are some more examples. Look at them and see if they are trading up or down. Mark and Spence's premium food, modern, high quality, even posh. It links food with prestige and stages and encourage middle to high class customers, as well as who do not shop in M and S. It focuses on what customers value and expect, therefore can charge the products, services with premium prices. Aldi is a German low cost grocery chain grows fast and is the UK's fifth largest supermarket. It position itself as low-cost retailer, but gives customers the perception of British quality food and high value for money to attract British middle class. Retails are constantly brand the products to technology, social status, cultural superiority therefore, encouraging customers to upgrade to the newest, the latest and the best phones, either of the same brand or to more luxury brand. The answers are Mark and Spencer's trading up, Aldi trading down, retail brand being more luxury trading up. Can you guess what brand this is? This is the apparel company Coach, one of the most successful trading up brands. With the consumer's attitude changing in the recent decades, handbags, and almost all accessories, have become fashion and status items, and Coach has been in the vanguard. Coach considers itself the embodiment of affordable luxury, a coveted brand that is priced some 30% to 40% below luxury designer goods, but much higher than the original middle range prices. By trading out the company expanded rapidly, became one of the iconic brands of new luxury and created a segment of consumers that are willing to trade up to the premium product in categories that are important to them. Another example of trading up brand. With more and more fashionistas looking up to Michael Kors as their icon brand when it comes to their style statement, the label has made it big across the world trading up as well. It becomes one of the most popular names around the world offering chic luxury at affordable prices. The COVID-19 pandemic has gravely wounded the world economy with serious consequences impacting all communities and many businesses. But also is opening up new opportunities for trade and development. This news show that UK consumers had been trading up on wines, and there was no sign of this growth slowing. 
other alcoholic drinks are also highly performing category in terms of the growth. As lockdown continued, more alcoholic drinks were the standout of choice for consumers. Why do people like trading up? According to BCG Global Consumer Survey, people from different countries trade up due to these reasons. Products give better results. Meaningful technical differences. Category is especially important to me. And so on. Among many of the reasons, Russian and Chinese consumers ranked high in better brand name as a key trading up reason. For example, this review from TripAdvisor of a tourist visiting Hotel Nico Saigon in Vietnam shows that the customer was very happy with the value of the products and felt satisfied by paying slightly higher for added benefits of the products and services. When coming to travel and vacation products, American and European consumers rank these categories of products and service highly comparing to those from some other countries. These products are not on the top 10 list to Chinese consumers and ranked as the lowest by Russian consumers. Actually, consumers also are willing to trade down and treat it positively. They tend to consider trade down as practical, frugal and a part of taking care of the family. During the COVID-19 pandemic, categories that consumers like to trade up are mainly essential products, such as fresh or organic foods, vitamins or supplements, and household care. They are also willing to trade down some categories such as apparel and accessories that are not important to them. Both trading up and trading down phenomenon is fast growing, widespread and complex. As the trend continues to grow, there is a new phenomenon intensified death in the middle in America in recent decades. This is a fact that many factors conspired to squeeze the middle, while, for the most part, the two ends of the spectrum continue to thrive. Some retailers are doing better than others. Luxury brands and discount chains are holding on to their traffic and sales, for the most part. But those whose traditional customers are in the middle, however, are finding it difficult to sell at full price, move the discretionary or premium goods, and grow their base. A strategy of being just about everything to everybody of selling average products to average people in an average experience was becoming increasingly untenable. There are many benefits to trade up include 1. Customers retroactively value expensive purchases 2. Customer loyalty by addressing customer needs and expectations 3. To create the best possible product, services 4. The business doesn't need as many customers. It filters customers 5. Profit margins can grow if costs stay the same 6. Branding and better positioning for the business. This page summarizes some important trading up strategies. If they are done appropriately, consumers are willing to accept like we see in the video. 1. Innovation and create USP. 2. Put cost into quality, investing in better raw materials, imaginative design, etc. Better understanding consumers' needs and trends. 3. Deliver genuine technical, functional, and emotional differences in product, service. 4. Target consumers tightly, ignoring traditional market segmentations and looking for common attitudes, spending patterns, etc. 5. Branding, create appealing identities, retail presentation, and engaging experiences. 6. Create products apostles, brand ambassadors, create good brand recognition. That's for today's teaching. You can do some homework at home. For this session, you can read the article about UK wine sale during COVID-19 and answer these questions. 1. Why do you think premier alcohol drink are being traded up during COVID-19 lockdown? 
2. How do you think wine companies should do to provide value-added products to satisfy the customers? 3. Similarly, what other kinds of goods, services do you think could be traded up or down during lockdown and fill in the information in the table below? 4. What kind of trade up and trade down opportunities are available for the travel industry? Write at least two each in the following table. Today's topics cover upsell, cross sell, trading up and trading down. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this lesson. See you next time.